Hey everybody, thank you for sending in your questions for this Q&A. Uh, I hope that my answers are going to satisfy all of you. And let's begin. Where can we go to find crystals in our own backyard out in nature? You can find crystals anywhere. Uh, well, you can find quartz just about anywhere. It's very common. It's the most common stone that you're going to find. Uh, I like to go fluorescent hunting, so you could literally get a UV light. There's different frequencies, you should do some research, but get a UV light and go looking at night in like local woods or whatever, and you will find UV lights out in the woods. Uh, so that's kind of a really fun and easy thing you can do, you just need a UV light. There's mineralogy societies that sometimes do have like uh, group outings, group events, where they'll take you. Uh, looking for different rocks. So if there's a local mineralogy society, you can get involved with them. Join your local mineralogy society and they will take you on rock hunts and also help you identify minerals you find. What is my favorite crystal? I really like agate. I know agate is a very common stone, but I do genuinely like agate. Uh, I get very excited to go through agate. Uh, it's just so different in so many different types. But the, my favorite crystal that I have in my collection, mm, I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. Uh, but I do hope to display my collection come, coming this year. What is something you wish to tell a crystal lover? Keep loving your crystals. <laughs> Where do you get your crystals from? We primarily source our material directly from mines all over the world. Uh, we do a lot of our own manufacturing. I'm going to say about 90% to 85% of our own manufacturing. How do you remember so many crystals? You know, this is a question that I get answered, uh, asked a lot. I've been doing it for so long. You know, in my opinion, experience is definitely the way to learn quicker. Um, I'll, I have a lot of people that come in that have like these degrees and the crazy education, uh, but you, the experience you get from being on site and doing things, I mean, I've been traveling and going to the mines for years, so I've learned just from experience. Uh, it's like the same thing with the doctor. Like if I talk to a doctor, I'm like, how do you know all of this stuff? And like, well, because I'm a doctor. And the same thing goes for anybody's profession. You know, you just learn over the years and you just figure it out. How to build an audience for live sales. Can you break down marketing a live sale to where people show up? What should be doing when sales are low? So the first thing to do when your sales are low is to not freak out. And the second is to strategize and figure out what am I doing that's not working and what am I doing that is working? And then remove the things that aren't working, that aren't making you money, that aren't productive, that waste your time, effort, and energy. And then find the things that are working for you and increase your attention to those things. Uh, if you're trying to build an audience for live sales, whether it's Facebook or Instagram or whatever platform you're using, that involves you gaining interest. People want to know about you and your story and why they want to tune in in the first place. So it's not like you're going to advertise or market and get more people to tune into your stuff and buy your stuff. The way that you get people to tune in is to have a story that people can relate to. Uh, I don't have any degrees or I got kicked out of like school. I, I just have a lot of life experience and I've been through the ringer which gave me the ability to uh, make good decisions. So don't freak out, don't be discouraged, just continue doing what you're doing and focus on the things that are working. I see Chris collect tons of different types of stones and crystals. Does he also collect raw diamond or Herkimer diamond? I do have a lot of Herkimer diamond. I actually have quite a few friends that own mines uh, in Herkimer. Uh, so yeah, I have a lot of Herkimer diamonds. I've been gifted a lot of Herkimer diamonds. Uh, as far as raw diamonds go, I'm not into gemstones or raw gemstones. I don't, I don't have anything to do with that. That number one, it's a very hard market to break into, and I'm going to say 99% of that market is not the most pleasant as far as you know my general ethics are concerned. So I don't collect raw diamonds, but I do have a, a pretty good collection of Herkimers. How can we get wholesalers from Africa and India? Hmm. It's going to be really tough. You got to find somebody who's a wholesale distributor, someone like myself, and buy from someone like me so that at least you have security and safety and consistency. Uh, most dealers from out of the country, especially when you're talking about China, India, Pakistan, Indonesia, Africa, there's a lot of kids who are not really wholesalers. What they do is they go and they find like mining companies or wholesale companies and they go and they take a bunch of pictures. And that's who's contacting you on Instagram, by the way. It's not like these big wholesale companies are contacting you, trust me. Who's contacting you are kids who go to these companies and take pictures and then send them to you and are like, oh, you buy stuff? Like, I, I sell stuff. 
uh, they don't even own that material that they're sending you. They have nothing to do. Oh, I produce, I mine, I, I manufacture. No, they don't, trust me. How can we tell which crystals are popular or about to become popular? I do essentially uh, market research, meaning that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my, in my social media platforms to tell me what's popular and what's not popular. It's also, it's like, is it tumbled stone, points, spheres, pyramids, towers, generators, what palm stones, what, what is the popular shapes as well? So we will throw up items on our social media and see how quick people bite on those items on, on those items and then if things sell very quickly for us we know that this is an item that's worth making a good amount of material for uh, uh, the reason that I have people doing social media sales is not because I'm trying to you know get rich doing it I'm trying to figure out and gauge the market and where the market is there's no way to predict the trends some kid is going to post Moldavite on TikTok and then all of a sudden Moldavite, which was not really popular at all, becomes the most popular thing in the world. Finding new stuff that's also very pretty uh, is going to dictate a trend as well. Like when Caribbean calcite showed up uh, or pistachio calcite. When that, when that first showed up, forget it, it was everywhere, all over the place. Now nobody really cares about it, but it had a good six month run. They're asking how do they learn more or get involved more. Mineralogy societies are definitely, if you're into crystals and rock hounding and things like that, join your local mineralogy society, support them. Because uh, it's usually a lot of old timers who have been around for 30, 40, 50, 60 years doing it, and they know everything. Uh, a lot of the times when I have questions about things that I'm not totally sure about, I do contact uh, the local mineralogy society. How do you build crystal community for your business? So let's just address building a business, uh, period, and not necessarily associated with crystals, although the consumer for crystals is going to be a very particular kind of person. So the first thing that I tell people, number one, what is your story? What is your angle? It took me a long time to understand the importance of creating a narrative. So people wanna know the story behind what they're buying and behind what they're getting which is not always true there's two kinds of buyers there's the one who's looking for the best deal and then there's the one who's looking for the best story the kind of people typically looking for the best deal are going to be a difficult group of clients to service um, and I don't mean that in a negative way I just mean that you know they're gonna make you work a lot harder for their business as opposed to someone who's interested in buying into the story the person who's interested in buying into the story finds value in the story and then is more um, inclined to pay you for your services and what you're doing. So my first suggestion is what you have to figure out, uh, <clears throat> do I want to cater to the larger end market that's looking for the best price or do I want to build a really good story and a really good narrative and then attract people who are interested in my story and narrative. So that's the first thing. Uh, I'm going to go with the story and narrative side of it and we'll build on from there. <clears throat> Next, you need to be offering something unique, especially now in the crystal business where there's literally a bazillion people trying to sell crystals. Um, what is it that you're doing that's different than the other 7,000 people around you? And again, I've given this narrative, I've given this example before, which is like if you're walking up to a pond and there's already 5,000 people casting a line in the pond, you're going to have a hard time catching fish there. But if you find a pond where, you know, there's fish in that pond as well, uh, and you're casting a line where there's only 100 people fishing in there, it's going to be much easier for you to catch fish. And the thing that I find to be interesting about the crystal industry is everyone seems to kind of stay on this straight and narrow path, and rarely does anybody deviate. There's a huge demand for higher end stuff, for pricier things, for better quality things, but most people stay in the lane, which is like, you know, towers, carvings, palm stones, spheres, pyramids, little clusters. That's the pretty much the standard of the industry right now, in the crystal industry. <clears throat> but the people who come and buy higher end things, more extravagant things, tend to do very, very well because they're competing against a smaller market where there's literally 100,000 people selling spheres and palm stones. There's only 1,000 people selling high-end minerals. So that's kind of what I tell customers who come in here is like, how do I get the edge? Buy nice, crazy stuff. Yes, it's $50 for this and $100 for that and $200. It's not $3 and $5, but that's, that's the angle in my personal opinion. Uh, 
find an, an, an arena that has less people set up there. Um, on top of that, also, uh, again, like I, I need to reiterate, your narrative and your story is so important. What is your angle? What is it that you're doing to connect to the people that are around you? What does your branding look like? For example, and I don't mean this as a knock, I'm doing this to help whoever's listening to this, not to execute an agenda. Number one, let's just say that you own a business that is wicked, or you are a psychic or a medium, or you're an energy healer, and you're now taking your practice and you're incorporating it into your business. What you're doing is you're locking yourself into a box that says, I'm only going to sell to people who are interested in that particular genre or that particular agenda, whether it's a, a spiritual or religious or a, a cult, what, whatever you're into. If you're applying that into your business, you're turning your business into that. So if you want to cater to the mass market, you can't apply your own personal beliefs and agenda to your business because then you're only going to be dealing with people who have a similar agenda. That's a huge thing. Uh, I see people making logos and branding themselves based around their religious or spiritual practices and what you're doing is you're essentially, push, you're essentially pushing away everybody except for people who are interested in your own agenda. So that's something else to think about. You, know, you can still be who you are and have your beliefs but just keep it separate from your business. R separate church and state. That's what I tell people all the time because when people come in here they have this idea oh, I'm going to have to go write about the crystals and rose quartz for love and that, that you don't even need to do that. that that's not even a necessary thing but most people think I have to sell the crystal via telling people metaphysics or spiritual things it's not true you're gonna be actually locking yourself into a very tight box by doing that try it out see see remove your uh, remove your agenda from your business and see what happens if it works then great if it doesn't work then go back to the old way you know, last thing I'm going to say in this video, I love Gordon Ramsay. I know he's kind of a wild card, but I, there's very few people that I'm personally interested in as far as business and getting business advice and whatever it is. I love Gordon Ramsay. I think that this guy knows exactly what, even there's times where I'm watching his shows and I'm like, man, this guy's like a real dick. But I see what happens and what's, what he's actually doing. And the, the thing that is so important is that you see people who he's going and trying to help, but he's being very aggressive about it, so it makes it hard for him to help. But people who are like so sure that he's wrong and that he doesn't know what he's talking about, but he does in the end. And if people just open themselves up and give him the chance to come in and, 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 and inject himself into their businesses, uh, which is called Kitchen, uh, Kitchen Nightmare, I think it's called, something like that. Uh, I've been watching a little bit of that. He goes into these places, he annihilates the business, your food is terrible, you're an idiot, this whole place sucks, you're all stupid. You're, but what he's doing is he's trying to break down you and your beliefs and the things that you think you're doing that are working for you when they're not working for you. But you're not going to get away from that unless you realize that it's not working for you. It happened to me. A very, very good friend destroyed me. I thought I was doing great. And this guy came along, he totally destroyed me, and it helped me to reset and reconfigure everything, and I grew my business 300%. So it's important that you you know, are open to ideas that you don't like to hear, because we're, 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 we're a people that get very comfortable, we get very complacent, and then we want to sit and stew in the things that we think we're doing right. But sometimes we think we're doing something right, and we're actually doing something wrong. Thank you everybody for tuning in. It's a pleasure to do these videos and I'll see you in the next one.